A common theme that I hear in my counseling office is the theme of agony. There are times when people will come into my office and they'll talk with me about the pain and just the, uh, the misery that sometimes they can experience once they figured out that somebody that they wanted to have a close relationship with turned out to be very narcissistic. These people can say, well, as best I could, whether it's with my parents or my marriage partner or a dating relationship or a business associate or a friend or someone of that nature, they'll say, you know, I, I had good intentions with that person, but I, I didn't really know how to think like a narcissist. And as a, as a result, they kind of played me like a fiddle. And then uh, as the, the days and weeks and years uh, can pile up, it's like, Man, I just feel like I've been run over by a Mack truck. What am I supposed to do? Well, in this video, I'm going to want to talk with you about some of the mind games that narcissists play so that as you are trying to make your way through some of these primary relationships, you'll be aware of what you need to watch for. And so I'm hoping that you won't get so pulled in that you wind up losing your entire self in the process. Or if you have been with someone who's narcissistic, I want you to be able to see what these mind games are so that you can adjust and make corrections and move on in a much healthier kind of way. Narcissists are manipulators. They love to figure out what your weak spots might be or what your vulnerabilities are, and they will try to figure out how to uh, put you in a position where you're doing their bidding. It's what we call narcissistic supply. And frankly, they don't particularly care what you think or feel. And if you wind up feeling hurt or angry and all that defensive or uh, disgusted, it's like, hey, that, that's, that's your problem. And, and if you're saying, but you're the one that's creating it in me, uh, it's like, uh-uh, don't put that on me. And so they don't take responsibility for themselves, but they will continue playing games. So let's, get, let's just get right to it. I've identified seven mind games that narcissists will play, and I want you to, uh, to figure out how you can respond to these in such a way that you don't just continue playing along on your end of the equation. Now, the first mind game is the, the narcissist will say, I want you to learn how to trust me. So many times, narcissists, sometimes at the beginning of the relationship, but often during times uh, as the relationship has had some, some length to it, they can act very friendly. They can show themselves to be interested. They'll ask questions about who you are and what you feel and what you're up to. And they may say some very supportive kind of things to you. And uh, you can think, man, this is really nice. This person is really into me. And so you open up and you talk with them about who you are and what you feel. And they can uh, just say, yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, in a healthy relationship, <laughs> ideally that's exactly what we want to do. But with the narcissist, it, it, it's a mind game. It's like, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to, uh, to pour out your heart and soul. And by the way, you'll notice they won't do it in reverse, or if they do, it's of a pseudo nature. Uh, I want you to pour out your heart and your soul to me because I'm taking notes and I'm going to start figuring out, you know, where you hurt or what your needs are. And it's going to come back a little later on and it's going to bite you. But uh, many times these people can start out by being very trustworthy and friendly and on your team. A second mind game that these people can play is uh, they can begin to establish an upper hand over you. Uh, once they kind of bring you in and they let you presume that they're pleasant and friendly and on your side, you'll notice a certain criticism starts coming in. Why did you do it that way? Or I don't think you should have said it this way. Or no, 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 you shouldn't have done this. I'm right and you need to listen to what I have to say. Or I can do that better than you. Or uh, I know more than you. Now they may not say it that way, but that's kind of the way they come across. And so as you get to know the narcissist, you find that these people are quite self-confident and they have an, an inflated sense of their own sense of correctness. And then if you try to speak in anything different, it's like, well, no, I don't need to listen to you. Just, just uh, pay attention to me. They can drop back to game number one. And it's like, uh, you, you just need to know, I look at life a whole lot better than the average person out there. You're going to have to trust me. 
Now, a third mind game that they play with you as you get to know them and as you get to be pulled more and more into their confidences, they begin to instill fear in you. They like it when you fear them. Now, they can be very stubborn. Uh, they can be uh, uh, very uh, judgmental. Uh, they can uh, offer strong emotion and uh, some of that criticism that they might uh, originally start out with becomes hard anger. And uh, you can get to the place to where you think, well, if I tell them this about myself or if I reveal that truth about me, oh, they're going to blow up at me. They're going to get mad. So I just need to lay down my preferences and do what they tell me to do because I don't want to have to deal with all of the difficulty. And I've had some uh, people that have talked with me who in many other respects are very confident people themselves, but they've told me, it's like, well, with the narcissist, forget it. It's not worth it. Uh, if I try to show my uniqueness and if I try to express myself for what I am, it's just going to create more problems that it solves. And that's the fear that's kind of uh, uh, been put on the inside of them. And it's seeped in to where it becomes a part of their response style. Well, a fourth mind game is uh, they can sabotage you behind your back. You see, as you uh, get to know them and they get to learn about your trends and tendencies, part of their game that, uh, that keeps them in the superior position is they like to isolate you from other individuals. They don't particularly want you to have strong allies or supporters. And so many times these people will speak about you without you even realizing it, and it tends not to be very flattering. For example, let's suppose that it's a family setting, and that narcissist uh, talks to some of your relatives who may have just given you a compliment, and the narcissist may say, well, I, I know that you are impressed by thus and such that uh, this person did, but... Actually, behind the scenes, um, there, there's quite a few other things that you just don't know. And, and then they go into a story about how you blew it or you made a mistake or you did something wrong or you said something about them. But in, in doing so, they're, they're trying to keep people from, uh, from having too much of a strong confidence in you. Why? Because that keeps them in the superior position. And so sabotaging other people uh, in their relationship with you keeps them elevated and then it keeps you beholden to them because uh, you have fewer and fewer people uh, that perhaps uh, know and understand you because the, the narcissist is tripping it all up. Uh, a fifth mind game is they'll find your flaws and then hold it against you. Now, uh, many times as part of their the trust me kind of mentality, uh, you might actually go so far as to say, well, you know, years ago I, uh, I made this mistake or I had this blunder or I've never really told anybody, but, uh, but I kind of blew it in this circumstance. And they can seem in the moment to be very understanding of you, but then later on when they feel like they need to score some points, uh, they may come back and, and recall the flaw that you exposed to them, and they'll say, I know what your character's like, and I know who you are, and you're not nearly as good as you think you are. Do you remember that thing that you told me about that happened two years ago? And they can go into all of that. And uh, when you say, well, wait a minute, I, I thought I was talking with you in a way that was, uh, was part of a loving and accepting exchange, well, you realize uh, that's not the way they work. It, it, when they say, talk with me about who you are, it's a game and they're collecting data. And then if there's any uh, uh, need for them to forgive you, let's suppose you said, you know, I did something and uh, you know, it had some negative repercussions on you. Oh, they will not forgive you because it's like, oh, I have that many more cannonballs against you that I can shoot at you. And so that's the way they operate. Um, now, a sixth mind game uh, that a narcissist will play is they often portray themselves as a victim. Uh, they, they, they need to come across as being blameless. Uh, blameless. Uh, they need to come across as being somebody that has very good intentions. And so if there is something about them that goes wrong, let's say they've made a miscalculation or something happened that uh, they feel embarrassed about, Instead of saying, yeah, I kind of blew it, what they'll do is they'll say, well, if something negative happened uh, originating from me, 
The reason is because this person over here did it to me. And I would never have made this mistake had this other individual done their fair share of the job. And so they just kind of go into a blame game. They have to have somebody that they can pin their mistakes on and, uh, and uh, that person can be you. And then a seventh mind game that these individuals talk, uh, uh, will play with you is they, they talk with you in terms of heavy duty and obligation. They speak with you as if life is one long list of rules and regulations. I, I refer to it as the imperative style of thinking. You have to, you must, you've got to. And then when you say, well, I don't want to do things because I have to, they'll, they'll just double down. Well, you've got to anyway. And so they, they come at you as if life is a, a big regulatory um, uh, mindset that you're supposed to buy into. And of course, they're the ones that get to write the regulations. Now, as you look at these different mind games that, uh, that the narcissist will play with you, uh, you'll recognize that the name of the game for them in the overarching sense is I want you to lose whatever is unique about you and you need to come under my clutches and be what I tell you to be. So as you recognize this and as you see that there is much of this game playing that's going on that's trying to take you away from your natural self, uh, let, let's take a look at a, a few key thoughts as we wrap up here. First, don't give them the reaction that they want. Once you begin spotting these games, they want you to be afraid. They want you to be angry. They want you to be defensive because it's like, yeah, look at how idiotic you're acting. Uh, you want to learn how to, uh, to respond to these folks with a calmness and a steadiness. I, I know there are some folks that they'll say uh, when, you, uh, when you catch a narcissist, uh, being a narcissist, you need to punch him in the nose. Well, you don't need to do that because that's just playing the game of control right back at them. Now, I will say another thought when I say, first of all, don't play their games or don't give them the reaction, but it is reasonable at times to confront them and let them know, I'm on to what you are, have going on. And so I'm not against confronting and, and, ex, and exposing them for what they are. Uh, if you say something to the effect of, I don't like the way you handle this, or you mismanaged uh, this situation, or you, you misrepresented me, and they say, no, I didn't, then hold your ground and be willing to call them out and be willing to say, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, and claim your strength. And many times uh, people say, well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, you need to just simply uh, for no other reason than to hear your own self uh, say it because, uh, again, keeping in mind they want to, uh, to strip you of your dignity and by standing up for yourself, that's your way of saying, well, I think of myself in dignified ways. And then uh, a third thing that I want to encourage as you respond to this is don't go down argumentative rabbit holes with a narcissist. Once you're on to their game and once you see that they're, they're messing with you and they're exploiting and using and manipulating you, uh, rather than arguing about uh, fine points of what they could have done differently, uh, state your uh, willingness to uh, your unwillingness to go along with them. State your different preferences. Live out your uh, your boundaries and your stipulations. And then when they want to argue with you, the the response is, "I have nothing more to say." Now, there's a, a very famous way of explaining life in these kind of situations as you are thinking about how to respond to this manipulative person, and that is, let your yes be yes let your no be no. Uh, narcissists want to keep you in disarray. They want to keep you in doubt and confusion about who you are. But I'm hoping that there is going to be a mindset in you that says, I see what you're up to and I see your games and I choose not to participate and I'm going to stand upon my yeses. I'm going to stand upon my no's. I'm comfortable with who I am. Can you think like that? Now, I do hope that you uh, enjoy the videos that we have for you. Beneath the video, I have some links to some books that I hope that you'll find to be helpful. And we'd invite you to subscribe to our, uh, to our channel here. Uh, there's the subscribe button, and there's actually a little bell there that uh, helps uh, get you notifications so that we can let you know when more videos come up. Thanks for being a part of our Surviving Narcissism community.